you still snog? Do I still what? Snog? <laughs> Was that a question? Snog? Um, do I still snog? Uh, let me think about this. No, because <laughs> snogging is something you do when you're a fumbling hormonal teenager, isn't it? Um, I mean, I still kiss passionately my wife, but snogging yeah. feels like a very particular type of kissing, don't you think? So I think if I'm honest, I'm not sure I do much snogging anymore. <laughs> okay. Plenty of kissing, but not a lot of snogging. Okay, but that's nice. You're still kissing. That's good. Oh, we're still kissing. <laughs> My we're second kissing. question to you wow. is, can you tell me in three words yes. about your first love or your big love? Oh my God, in three words, my first love or my big love? Um, three words that describe that, that love or that period of time. Yes. Um, okay, I'm going to say like beautiful, mm -hmm. adventure, exciting. That's a great word, like that. Then, is there a special song that will bring you back to just that moment? Yes. A song by Seal called Violet. Yeah. Oh. That was the soundtrack of that period of time in my life. I used to drive from Bath in Somerset all the way down to Lausanne. And his album had just come out. And that song was very much encapsulates that period of time. That's lovely. Mm. Then, how do you feel the intimacy of dance is important to one's love life? <laughs> um, well, how do I feel the intimacy of dance is important to one's love life? I don't dance nearly enough. I think it's such a wonderful thing to be able to do. But I, sadly, I feel like as I get older, or maybe this happens to all of us, we just get more self-conscious and we don't dance nearly enough. I don't know how integral it is to one's intimacy. I suppose if you dance a lot, yeah, it probably is very good for one's intimacy. I mean, we see on Strictly Come Dancing, it's the death of, of all relationships and the birth of many <laughs> new ones. They'll start having sex with their dance partners and leaving their actual partners. So there's obviously some sort of link, definitely, as you would be if you're very intimate and physical with each other every day. Um, I don't dance with my wife nearly enough, um, but... Uh, you don't do it at the dinner parties, you know, when you have dinner parties with friends and stuff, you don't put on the music and stuff. Yeah, we did a bit, but not, yeah, at my 50th we did. We had a big 50th and we put on music and we all danced together. I think that was the last time I remember properly dancing with my wife. Sometimes when she's getting changed in the morning and she doesn't have any time and I, I annoy her and I just go up and I pretend to give her a cuddle and we start to do a little dance like that. But yeah, no, we don't dance nearly enough. It's a very yeah. interesting point, yeah. Yeah. And then is there a genre of music that can help you to get into a character that you are playing? Will um, you use music? No, I don't use music that often. I use film and TV a lot more, but I know what you mean. There is some very evocative music that could be helpful. I've not used it much. I used yeah. to, when I was younger, in fact, even when we were at drama school, I used to sometimes wander around uh, museums and parks and places like that, listening specifically to soundtrack music. I used to love that. I used to then pretend I was in my own movie. So I used to do a version of that, but there's nothing specifically that I use to get into a character. There's music that's sometimes used in a play that can be quite helpful. But um, no, I remember when the three color, the trois couleurs, blue, rouge, and blanc came out. I used to listen to that. Yeah, he was in that actually. Couleur Who was? Oh, he was in that one. He was in that trilogy. Color, color red, yeah. No. Doing what? Acting in it. <laughs> yeah, the small part. Oh my God, I have to watch it back again now. <laughs> so I used to, um, yeah, those, and Eric Serra, there are certain people who make soundtrack music, like Hans Zimmer, Eric Serra, they create quite evocative music, but I've yeah. never, I, uh, I've never used it specifically to get into a, into a particular character, but I do like listening to. Um, so you wouldn't either then maybe use uh, uh, how they would dance? 
these uh, characters you're playing? You wouldn't no, do I've never not done. Really. No, I've no, never done that. No, no. What? How does my character dance? No, never done that. No. And then, <laughs> um, is there a role for you that you've acted that you love more than the others? There are none that still really exist with me. I think that might be a bit unhealthy, but um, <laughs> there are two characters. There's a play I did written by Nina Rain called Consent. And the character I played in that, um, she wrote it very kindly with me in mind, which was very flattering because he was a lot cleverer and a lot wittier than I am. No, so I, I don't believe that. I very much enjoyed playing him because he was sort of a slightly funnier, brighter version th than myself and more of a shit maybe than I would typically be. <laughs> so I quite enjoyed playing him. And then Mike Bartlett created another character in a play called Bull and he was just venal. He was really an unpleasant character, but we had to sort of toe this line for the audience of whether were we being unpleasant or was it all the other characters fault? And it was a very interesting line to walk so that our behavior could at any point be totally denied. Deniability was like the key word. And that was also quite thrilling to play. That was very exciting because it had such an, a visceral reaction to the audience. The audience were very close. It was, it was staged as though we were in like a sort of boxing ring, but it was set in an office and they were very close and you could feel their reaction palpably. And that was quite exciting. So those would be my two... Yeah, and, and in a way, you have to love him anyway, no? Always got to love your characters. They've yeah. always got a reason. There's, there's, it's never black and white, is it? They're all, huh. it's all, you have to work out their, their history or their psychology or why their human condition is as it is. But um, yeah, yeah, there's, it's, it's always in the greys. Yeah. And then we would love to hear what you're up to now, if you can tell. I Mind can tell you a little bit. I'm doing, um, I've just finished doing a film in Italy called The Penitent based on David Mamet's play of the same title. And David Mamet has done the screenplay of it. And that was quite exciting to be able to do his language and his words on film. It was a bit of a challenge, but um, that was being quite an interesting project and always lovely to shoot in Rome. We shot it predominantly in um, Rome. Rome had to double for New York. I mean, they are going to go to New York to do some second unit stuff, but um, I've literally just finished doing that. I've just started on a huge film version of the musical Wicked, uh, oh. and I can't say too much about that. Oh, but Edita was super jealous. Yeah, oh. I can tell you that I'm playing, Ariana Grande is playing Glinda, which I think is, we're allowed to say, and I'm playing her father, but that's probably all I can say. That's super that's, cool. That's quite exciting to film at that scale. And then I'm just about to start another film um, called We Live in Time with Andrew Garfield and Florence Pugh. And it's been written by a very, very brilliant uh, playwright called Nick Payne, who had a, a, a huge success with an early play of his called Constellations. So, um, so yes, I'm about to start rehearsals for that. And Super then... Fun. Then there are some other things that I filmed that are coming back. So there's like a third season of Hotel Portofino. They're redoing Belgrade. My parents love that, by the way. Do they? Oh my, God. They think, my mom always said you were so handsome. And now she's like, oh, he's so handsome. Even with my funny little <laughs> moustache. Uh, yeah, so we're doing some more of that. And we're doing some more Belgravia, which was a Julian Fellows um, period drama. So we're doing some of those in the in the summer. So oh. yes, it's sort of, yeah, it's okay. It's It's busy enough. It's more than okay. It's fantastic. And then my last question to you yes. is, yeah. how does the word music make you feel? Music, um, it, it's, uh, right now it makes me think I don't listen to enough of it. Our lives get so busy, you forget. Like, also, it feels like podcasts have taken over my, my, the bandwidth that I normally use for listening to music has now been usurped by podcasts. And because Woody, my son, is just getting into music and like Disney songs, like Moana and um, what's the other one he loves listening to? All those sort of Disney musicals. And some of the songs in there are brilliant. So we have to listen to that a bit, a lot in the car. But it makes me think I don't listen to music enough. 
And interestingly, I found an old iPod with all these songs. Uh, and I just put it on. Uh, I had an old speaker that could fit the iPod. And I sat there for maybe hour, hour and a half listening to all these wonderful old songs that I had. And then I switched on Spotify and I sort of transferred everything that I had on the iPad onto my iPhone and created a, a new playlist. The last time I really went through music was for my 50th. I had to compile a, a playlist for my birthday party. And that was great. And it, it always makes me think, gosh, music isn't enough in my life every day in a way that it was when we were younger. Do you know what I mean? When we were teenagers or young people i remember used to going out to buy vinyl you know the seven inches and the 12 yeah, inch yeah. cords and um i miss it and i don't it's not consciously enough in my in my life but when it is uh, i forget how important it is i did i did i didn't do a musical as such i did a play called girl from the north country which was sort of a, a play with songs in it and they were all bob dylan songs and it it was at a very difficult time in my life. I think Woody had just been born. It was that first year. And I remember going into the theatre every night and sort of slightly being restored uh, and without sounding too wanky, slightly healed by the music. There was something about harmonising and singing in a collective, in a group every night, particularly that music as well, that was very, very um, restorative. And it made me think how important music is in our lives but also to sing it as well yeah to sing the group um Very i important. mean these were particularly particularly talented people but it was a real privilege and a treat and it slightly helped me through a very difficult point at, at, at that point in my life and um yeah uh, uh, you uh, you underestimate the value and the power of music at your at your peril i think but I noticed yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, I took it i put in stereos every every room in the house and then yeah. we always did if I felt it was a bit agitated or things were not really great I would put on yeah. some classical music some calming soothing music especially with three boys going crazy yes, <laughs> and sure. it didn't really help you know with the yeah. animals and the kids and myself yeah. as well yeah but yes I think it can be quite healing and as you say yeah. singing is very important yeah it really is it was, a, it was a magical magical time actually to do that that piece of work but I do notice because we live these crazy busy lives and we're always racing out the door to get him to school or to get to work or getting picked up early for filming or something that there's no we don't set aside time just to listen to music in a way that we could afford to do when we were younger because we had the time mm. um but I, I do miss it I mean every morning we switch the radio on and classic fm is on so there's always a background of sort of music but it's not the same as like properly just affording yourself some time to listen to those listen yeah, to those tracks. Lovely. oh I love it thank you my pleasure <laughs> thank you so much lovely, lovely to, to see you, you again you.